you all came and uh, it's nice to see uh, a lot of you that uh, were in the band and that uh, we had uh, wonderful experiences uh, that we enjoyed uh, during those years. Uh, first of all, can I just ask how many people here were in any of my high school bands? Raise your hand. That, that, is, that, is, that is frightening. <laughs> Because you're going to tell me whether I got it right. <laughs> because it, it's very, uh, I mean, in writing this, first of all, let me just say that I wrote it because when we had the reunion in 2006, there were people who uh, expressed um, a desire to, somebody to, to write uh, a, the story of the band during these years. And where Nor uh, Brian Norcross has written a book on the band, uh, one band that took a chance. That's the name of the, the book. Uh, it basically uh, covers the uh, activities of the concert band. This book covers everything. And um, the uh, let me just read the the last paragraph here. In the. Uh, a word from the authors uh, in my a little spiel here, in the last paragraph, I said, the words me and I never appear in this book. This is intentional. The success of the 1955-67 Ithaca High School Band was a result of the dedication and collaboration of many people, including trusting and supportive, supportive, supportive parents, sympathetic school administrators, a community that valued music and the allied arts, dedicated teachers, guest artists such as Warren Benson, Frederick Fennell, Don Sinta, my wife Charlotte and our children, and most of all the exceptional and dedicated students of the Ithaca High School Band. It was a privilege to be part of it. Uh, I write this book in the third person. I always uh, refer to anything that I was involved in uh, as Mr. B, because uh, when I started to teach at Ithaca High School, I was only four years removed from being a senior at Ithaca High School. <laughs> And so that many of the students that were in in the band uh, going to high school were people who I, I circulated with. They were my friends. Uh, I might have even dated some of the girls. I'm not sure. <laughs> but but they, they, they found it very difficult to call me Mr. Battisti. And they called me, they, they could handle Mr. B. And so that's, uh, that's what's used in the book. It's all, uh, I always refer to myself as Mr. B. Um, the band uh, in those years was, was very different than most high school bands now. Um, when I was a student at Ithaca High School, I was a member of the band. There was a band. The same people who played at the football games were the same people who played in the, uh, for the concerts. During the course of my years there, we developed two uh, bands, the marching band and the concert band, and they were very connected. They were interconnected, but they were definitely different uh, groups with different objectives as far as educational objectives. Um, now, in the course of writing the book, I, I had students who had graduated um, give reflections on things that they recall from their experiences. And uh, I'm going to introduce Peter Farrell. Peter Farrell was one of the few the students who were in the band from 1956 to 1960 were the only students ever in the history of the high school to be in the high school band for four years. Because except for those years, the high school has always been a three-year high school. But in those four years, we were a four-year high school. So Pete was in the band for four years. Pete was the president of the band. He was a euphonium player. And he... Uh, was the drum major of the band. Like George Washington, 
I mean, the, if, in the Constitution, the, the president is not too well defined. The duties might be, but who the character? And um, we'd, we'd also played a, a premiere and a priest by him called Entertainment Three, uh, two years before. And after the premiere uh, with, uh, with Don and the concerto for alto saxo, he wrote this uh, letter to the members of the band. Dear Mr. Batisti and the members of the band, eight years old are buying five rock and roll albums at a crack. Television keeps insisting that we buy things we know we don't need, don't, uh, don't want, don't need, and which go to pieces immediately so that we'll have to buy new ones. Newspapers keep pumping us full of half-truths. No one's happy. Everyone's confused. Nobody trusts anybody. Morality gone down the drain, and Muzak goes on playing its pallid, pointless sounds everywhere but the graveyard. Kind of sounds like present day, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> and that's about it. Or so I thought before I went to Ithaca. There I found a miracle. I found a group of young people believing in something besides westerns, playboy, new cars, picture windows, the rolling stones, wrong car chords on badly tuned guitars, status seeking, the, rock mar the stock market, and music. I found people who believed in something as sturdy as an oak and as delicate as a hummingbird, music. I found people who were willing to work every day for the purpose of proving that something they believed in really could be made to live and breathe. I found people who knew that this miracle could never exist unless they forgot their own ego long enough to work with and listen to the sounds and ideas of others. People who were concerned with realizing the impossible. People who were eager to take risk uh, chances, risk failures, who would never be accused of not trying. People who never remained static, but who grew just as sturdy as does a tree or a flower and like a tree or a flower wouldn't stop growing until they burst into bloom. Pretty pretty nice letter, man. Pretty nice letter.